I'm gonna run through the 10 mistakes that I see most new video editors make, wasting a ton of time and killing the quality of their videos. And I'll also share how you can easily avoid them with a ton of video editing tips for beginners thrown in along the way. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. As a beginner, video editing can be totally confusing and it's easy to fall into some of the mistakes and the bad habits that can cost you a ton of time and kill the quality of your videos, making the whole process much more painful than it needs to be. And believe me, we've all been there. So while video editing can be one of the most daunting aspects of the video creation process, the good news is, is that with some simple tips to fix your workflow, it can become one of the most rewarding parts of the creative process. So in this video, I'm gonna run through the top 10 mistakes that beginner video editors make and how you can avoid them right now. Okay, so mistake number one is not considering your edit or your editing project at the time of actually filming your content. So when you're filming your content, you wanna make sure that you are asking yourself, am I definitely going to be using this? Is the length of time that I've captured of this shot, is that enough or do I need to get more? You don't wanna have extra footage for footage sake because more footage means more footage you need to edit. So it's gonna slow down your editing process because you need to go through and cut down more video footage. So when you're filming, be mindful of what it is you're actually capturing and whether you've got enough or whether you're actually going to use it in your end video project. This can save you a ton of time, not just in your filming, but also everything that flows on into the editing beyond that. Mistake number two is jumping straight into your video editing without having a plan in place for the end video that you're looking to create. So what are the goals of the video? Why are you making it? What do you want it to achieve? What do you want people to think, to feel, to know, or to do after watching your video? Having a plan and some goals and everything laid out around what you want your video to do and why you're actually making it in the first place and the feeling that you want your viewers to have while they're watching your video is again going to make your editing far more targeted, far more streamlined and much more efficient as well because you know with clarity what it is you're creating and why. Leading on from that then, the third one is not having a process in place to edit your videos down. We see so many people that jump into their editing applications, they'll dump their footage into the timeline and they'll just start color grading or tweaking the audio. You really need to focus on the content first. You wanna make sure that you've actually got enough footage to tell the story. You wanna make sure there's nothing wrong with the footage that you've captured so that you can tell the story. Jumping straight into color grading or to tweaking the sound or tweaking the audio, making it look or sound pretty is the stuff that you need to do later in the process. Adding all of that stuff in and doing that up front is going to slow down your editing system. It's gonna slow down your computer because it's gonna to have to process all of those things that you're doing. But also you might find that you actually don't have enough to finish the video or there's extra stuff that you need. So you really should be first and foremost focusing on the content first, but also following a process. Step one, import your footage. Step two, drop it down into the timeline, make sure it's all there. Step three, remove all the bad takes. Now, if you're interested in our process that we teach for the most efficient way to edit your videos down with minimal wasted time and rework, I will have a link at the end of this video where you can download a PDF version and follow along with that process while you're editing your videos. Number four is file management or file organization. You wanna make sure that you are organizing everything that you are using in your editing project into a logical place and ideally all in the one place, in the one folder. Now spending that little bit of time up front and making sure that everything is organized is gonna make it much easier for you while you're in the thick of editing. If you quickly need to find something, it's going to be in a logical place. So what I mean here is having a folder for your music, for all of your sound effects, for all of your footage, for all of your B-roll, whatever it is that you're using in your project, put it all in a logical place where you can find it while you're editing. But also, it's gonna make it much, much easier for you if you've ever got to come back to this project at a later date and try to find everything. It's gonna be all in one logical place. Or if you're ever gonna be working with another editor, or at some point, if another person needs to open up your editing project, it's gonna make it so much easier for them to find everything if it's all filed away in a logical place. And obviously, if it's all in the one place, instead of looking on 
external hard drives and different drives for different bits and pieces. So make sure you're just taking that little bit of time and just put everything in a logical place. Mistake number five is not taking the time to learn some of the simple keyboard shortcuts. Learning and understanding the keyboard shortcuts are going to speed up your editing tenfold. Simple keyboard shortcuts like being able to play forward, backwards and stop. Learning how to trim the top of your clip or the tail of your clip or ripple edit left and ripple edit right. If you're not already using them, these are gonna change the game for you and make your editing so much more efficient. Saving you with what you would do with multiple mouse clicks with just a single key press on your keyboard. So if you're not using some of the keyboard shortcuts yet, I would strongly recommend that you go up to the help area in the editing software that you are using, look for keyboard shortcuts, or even do a quick Google search for your editing application and keyboard shortcuts to start to get familiar with some of those because they are definitely going to speed up your editing and make you a much, much faster editor. And the top ones that I think you should look at are J, K, and L. So controlling the playback of your video, but also look for ripple edit left, ripple edit right. It may also be called trim top and trim tail. You'll thank me later. So that brings us to mistake number six, which is all around using music in your videos. Specifically, using the wrong music in your videos. Having music in there that is the wrong fit for your video and the feeling that you want your viewers to have being mismatched with the music that you're putting in there. The music is the easiest way to make your viewers feel something while they're watching your content. So the mistake here is having your wrong music in your videos or having the music in your videos much too loud. So it's distracting and it's annoying for your viewers and making it hard for them to actually consume the content because it's too overpowering. So in regards to the volumes and the best places to set it, it is gonna come down to an individual video per video basis. Again, come back to the goals. What do you want your viewers to think and to feel and to do after watching your video? And how does the music help or add to that? If it doesn't, turn it down or remove it if it's not adding to the video. Now, if you want some help on how you can find the best music tracks to suit the types of videos you're making, check out the video linked up in the cards on exactly that topic. Mistake number seven is over editing your videos, making way too many cuts, removing out every little pause or every little breath, just adding cuts for the sake of adding cuts or going the other way and adding in way too many transitions and too many effects. And all that does is annoy the viewers and make it distracting and hard for them to keep watching your content. If anything, stick to simple cuts, remove the mistakes, Tighten up stuff if it needs it. For the most part, the more you simplify your videos, the easier they're gonna be for you to edit, but also the easier for your viewers to watch without them just being overwhelmed and distracted by a whole lot of unnecessary noise or distractions in your video. Mistake number eight is not saving backup versions of your timeline or of your editing project as you progress your edit. So what most people do, especially beginners, is they'll just be working on the one timeline from start to finish, or the one project from start to finish. But this doesn't give you anywhere to go backwards if you need to, if something's happened, or if you're looking for something that you had in the last version, you'd then have to go back to the original raw footage to find it, if you didn't have those backup versions of your timelines. So what I would recommend you do here is as you progress through, every now and then or every time you hit a milestone, or ideally every time you're moving into one of the next steps inside of our primal video method editing process, which again, I'm gonna to link to you at the end, then you've got the ability to quickly go back and find stuff or to open up a previous version of your project if you need to, if something bad happens, if the project gets corrupted or you lose it somehow. Sometimes stuff happens. Mistake number nine is a real procrastination point for a lot of people, but especially beginners. And that is thinking that the video editing software that you are currently using isn't the one that you should be using or that there's something better out there. This is a huge thing that is slowing down and stopping a lot of people. The grass is always greener on the other side. Maybe some other editing application will let me edit faster or give me so many more effects that I can use in my, in my edits. What I wanna say here is the best video editing software for you is the one that is the fastest and the most efficient for you to do everything you need to do. 
video editing software, they're all just tools to edit video down. Yes, some have more advanced features. Yes, some of them may render faster than others. So you really wanna find which one is the best one for you moving forward. And then if or when you start hitting the limits of what you can do in that software, that's when you should really consider looking at some of the other options out there, but not before then. Focus on creating the content, focus on really learning editing as an art form and as a process. That way you can apply that and apply the fundamentals to any video editing software out there, not just one specific application. Now, if you are in that position where you are looking for maybe different video editing software, or you just wanna make sure that the one you're using right now is the best one for you, then I'll put links below in the description for our recommended video editing software on Mac and on Windows right now. But please don't use this as a procrastination point. And now number 10, this one's actually more of a pro tip that's gonna help you edit faster instead of really a mistake. But it'll make sense to you when I explain it. So what a lot of people do with their video editing is they're going through and they are working through from start to finish based on how they have recorded their content. And if you're cutting down a piece to camera video like this, where you're presenting to camera, um, you're going through all the bad takes and you're trying to find those good takes in there. In a lot of cases, you might even be cutting sentences in half where you've got the first half was really good and then you're grabbing the second half of the sentence from further down your timeline and you're piecing those together. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's a really slow way to edit and obviously to create content. And if you're all about systemizing and putting a process in place around this stuff, you can actually speed up your editing back in the filming by doing a couple of things that I'm gonna run through now. The first one is that you can leave yourself markers or notes. So if you wanna leave a note or a message for yourself while you're filming that you can review later in your editing, you could put your hand up towards the lens, you could clap. So you've got those audio spikes in your audio waveforms when you're editing, something that's gonna grab your own attention when you're editing your videos down to then be told that message or to remind yourself of something. So it could be that you're actually saying, actually, um, we'll use the first take, not the second one, or I forgot to put this piece back over here. So when we're editing, can we move this back? It may sound silly, but just adding those notes to yourself uh, while you're filming is gonna make it much, much faster for you to edit. And it will save you trying to sit there and take notes while you're actually recording your content. So that's one thing that you can do, but what we do with our videos is take that one step further. And I will only ever move on to the next dot point, the next paragraph, the next section of the video when I am happy with the last take. So the tip here is to make the last take while you're presenting the best one. And then when you jump over and do your editing, you know that that last take is always the one that you want to use. That's the best one. So then instead of editing from left to right or start to finish, you're actually able to edit from the back. So go to the very end of your timeline and that last thing that you have said is the one that you want to use. Then you're going backwards through and you're hitting those best takes first. So it's much, much faster for you to edit down a piece to camera piece of content like this one, where there is someone just presenting on a topic or reading a script. You can do that much faster if you've actually presented it to camera in the way where the last take is the best one. This tip is an absolute game changer and it will totally change the way you're creating your content and make it so much more efficient for you to get content out there faster. So those are the top mistakes that we see beginner video editors making and obviously how to overcome those things as well. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned our video editing process, the primal video method, which is linked on screen now and it's also below in the description. You can click on that and get access to the exact process that we use and that we recommend for you to edit your videos down with minimal wasted time and rework. It's literally step one, do this. Step two, do this. And this is going to allow you to create content much, much faster in the most efficient way. So grab your copy and I'll see you in the next one.